Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. In previous videos, uh, you've probably seen me talk about mixing in mono, given a good explanation of why you should do it and how to do it. But uh, in this video here, what I wanted to show you specifically was the easiest ways to actually do it and put your mix into mono in Cubase. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it, which hopefully will cover you off depending on whether you have the pro version or any of the lower versions as well. So one of these techniques should work within your Cubase session, no matter what level you have of the Cubase software. So let me show you how we do it and then you can apply it on your next mix. And uh, if you haven't checked out my explanation of mixing a mono and what we do it, then uh, check out the link below in the description, which will uh, send you straight to a good explanation of it. So let's get into it and I'll show you how I switch to mono in Cubase. Okay, so as you'll see here, I'm running Cubase Pro. So I've got some more advanced features that uh, you may not have if you don't have the Pro version. So let's start off with the Pro version and how I would do it here because it's quite simple. Now, you'll see over this section here, which you can hide or show, is the sort of the, the control room. And this is the most simplest way to do it in the pro version, right? Because I always have this control room up and running and it allows me to switch between various monitors that I have connected and do all other various things here as well. Changing the volumes, dimming, etc. But you'll see here the simplest button of all, which is just labeled stereo. And if I click on that, suddenly we go to mono. So just to prove the point here, I've got a song. I've just got to turn down so it's not too loud. We switch to mono. Very convenient for checking our mono compatibility of our song. Make sure that no instrumentation has been lost or any feeling from the song in any great massive differences. You know, obviously in mono, you're going to lose some feel and it's not going to be sounding as good, but you just don't want anything obvious that just sounds absolutely horrible when you switch over to it. So it's as simple as that, but you might have the pro version and you may not see that. You may not have access to that. And to get access to it, if you're not using the control room, and I suggest that that you do, because it is quite simple to use and very powerful, is you go up to studio here, depending on what version, it could be located in different menus. They keep moving these things around uh, when you get latest versions. This version here is 9.5. So I've got the latest version. But if you find the audio connections section here, and this is where you've got all of your routing, all of your buses, so your inputs, outputs. And what usually happens is if you're not running control room, you'll have your outputs here and they would be attached to, you know, your monitors would be attached to the ports on your audio interface. When you run control room, you actually blank these out. So the output section here does pretty much nothing. So nothing's established. And we go across to control room. Now you'll see this button here. This is on in my case, which means that the control room's on. So if I was to turn it off, it would disable control room. So once it's done that, you then are then reliant on the section here in the output. So you would have to reconnect those up again. And you'll see here over on the side, all of that functionality has now been removed from this, uh, this section here. And we've just got meters. Okay, so if we click the wrong control room here, it say, it says it's disabled. 
and you lose all that functionality. So if that's what you see when you do that, then obviously what I'm saying is go into audio connections, go across to control room and turn it on. And once you turn it on, then this section here may actually be blank. And what you may you will need to do is add your channels. So you can create all of your different uh, speakers. So what you'll see here, I've got A, B, C. So I've got three different monitor sections that I can switch between. So I have added, so if you go add channel, you can add up to uh, four monitors. You can add some cues and talk back and external inputs, etc. But so you would go there, just go add, and then you can rename it and assign it to the actual interfaces on your audio interface, the ports on your audio interface. Now these look a little bit weird at the moment with this, and that's purely because of the way I have to have this set to do these videos. Normally this would be configured to go to my uh, UAD Apollo, uh, but I use this special program to uh, allow the audio to be recorded within my video recording software here to do these videos. So that's why it looks a little bit weird. But you can see here, normally I have my main monitors here, which are Focals. Then I have some mixing headphones, and then I have a general Sony Hi-Fi stereo connection that just goes to a normal household Hi-Fi system to allow me to monitor through that as well. So I can switch between each of those very quickly from the control room. And obviously we can do our stereo and mono here. And that's all you need to do, and then if you are like me and you want to switch between four things, then you can obviously save a preset. So I've got some presets here to be able to change certain things, you know, to go back to my normal studio setup on my Apollo or to run this virtual voice meter software to record these videos. I can switch between them quite quickly. So that's what you do if you've got the pro version. Now, if you don't have the pro version, and let's hide that over there. What we want to do is we can do this in several ways. So we have our main output here, right? So I have a mix bus, and this is where I'm going to do everything here. You, you might have another output after that, but I'm not showing that. I like to do things on a mix bus. Now, we could do it in a pseudo sort of way here. So you can see we've got a pan here. So in this case here, we're not using the control room. Okay, we may not want to use control room or we may not have the pro version. So that functionality may not be included in our Cubase software. So at the moment, we've got our mix here and it's nice and stereo. So what we can do is we can actually change our panning to be center center. Now, it's not very convenient to do this backwards and forwards, but it is something that you can do. So turn it to center center, and in theory now, what we've got is a mono track because everything's been panned to the center on our main output, our mix bus. So that's pretty simple, right? That costs you nothing. We don't have to buy any plugins. We don't have to do anything. We don't even need a high-end version of Cubase. We can just do that straight away on this mix bus. And as I said, it's not real convenient, but it's not a pain, too much pain either. You know, just a quick couple of clicks there. You know, if you were to do it, trying to drag it in, that would be painful. That's why I just double click on each side and just put a C in, and then hit enter, double click on the other side, C, enter, done. Want to reverse it, double click, left, double click, R for right, and you're back to where you were.
Okay, so what if you don't like that approach and you want to have something that you can quickly switch things on and off and you want to use a plugin? Okay, we've got a couple of extra modes that I'm going to go with. First one here is that we can use a stereo enhancer plugin that comes with Cubase. Now, unfortunately, I don't know because I have the pro version, it is included in the pro version. I don't know if it's included in the other versions. So if it's not, I'm sorry, uh, because this might be a waste to show you this, but hopefully it is included in all the versions of Cubase. But if it's not, then obviously we'll, you can go to the next level. Worst case scenario, if none of the plugin situations work, control room doesn't work, then you've got the pan mode that I showed you before. But if you do have the Stereo Enhancer plugin, just place that on your mix bus. And you can see here, this is obviously designed to, to create more stereo width. That's what it's usually for. But you can actually narrow it. And even to the point they have a button here for mono compatibility check. So I'll play the mix and we'll turn that on and off. Okay, so hopefully that plugin is included in your version of Cubase. And if it is, very simple. Obviously, that's a lot faster than doing the panning mode there. You can have this plugin sitting there running all the time, and you can just open it up, click on that mono button, and you are done. Now, if you don't like that and you want to go for something else again, we can get another plugin. And this plugin is from Hoffa. It's the 4U meter fader and MS pan, and it is free to download. So you can get it in VST format, AAX, all various formats of plugins for various types of DAW. So if you're a Cubase user and you want to have this functionality in Pro Tools or something like that, then you can use this plugin here because it is free and will work with all of those DAWs. But we're talking about Cubase here, so I have obviously I have installed a VST version because I'm also on a PC. And you can see here we've got this is obviously more advanced because it's it is a meter, so it's got lots of different functionality to it. But we have some simple buttons here that we can click to change the mode and we can enable this mono button. So let's give that a shot when we turn it on. And we can even turn the meter off if we would like to make this even simpler. And we've got lots of advanced functionality here, but we can even flip the channels. Whatever you want to do there, we've got, and we can mute. So you could obviously keep this on your mix bus and use it for various features. You could just have it sitting there open all the time in a nice spot, and you can monitor your meters here. Okay, so there's several ways for you to be able to switch your mix into mono, mode in Cubase. So you've hopefully, unless I've missed something entirely in one version of Cubase that uh, I'm not aware of. So if I have missed something and there's a limitation with a certain version that I have not covered, please leave it in the comments below and I will I will find out how to do it and I will let you know exactly how to do it in your version of Cubase. But assuming that I haven't missed one and I've given you a solution to use in any version of Cubase, then you have no excuses of why you can't monitor your mix in mono to check for mono compatibility 
and to balance your mixes out and get a nice sounding mix in mono before you switch over to stereo to get that full impact. So try one of these methods out on your next mix, set it up in your template, have it ready to go so that you're using it all the time in all of your mixes. And hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching. If you like the video and you like what I'm teaching here, please subscribe to the channel. Check the links below for more content and yeah, leave a comment, ask me questions below. I'm happy to answer anything that I can. And again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.